I'm one of those people that you would call a Star Wars fanatic. As you can see, I own a R2-D2 onesie. I've got a Darth Vader Christmas sweater in there somewhere. And I think 1997's Jedi Knight is one of the greatest video games ever made. While I haven't really consumed as much of the expanded universe media as I would like, I'm that guy who will passionately argue that Jedi is better than Empire and then refuse to apologize for it. Moral of the story, I've always loved Star Wars and will always love Star Wars. That said, I'm also what you would call persona non grata when it comes to the sequel trilogy. In fact, I think those movies are a huge middle finger to George Lucas and scores of Star Wars fans who truly do adore characters like, you know, Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, and Leia Organa. Fortunately, we've got guys like Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau as the brains behind the Disney Plus streaming show, The Mandalorian, to give us the Star Wars content we always wanted, but didn't get from the mainline sequel trilogy. While the first season of The Mandalorian was good, I would say that season two is a massive leap forward that improves nearly every single element of the show. So let's discuss. Thank you so much for checking out the review. Before we get started, my goal is to get to 100 subs by the end of the year, so if you like the content, red subscribe button, notification bell, the whole deal. As mentioned in the title of this video, I will be spoiling the entire season from top to bottom, so if you want out, now is the time. While the first season of The Mandalorian established a likable protagonist and the most adorable baby Yoda you could possibly imagine, the sequel makes a few significant changes that are nearly all for the better. While there's certainly a few Monster of the Weekish type episodes, the vast majority of our story leans into the bigger picture. Instead of Din hopping around on the same few planets and solving problems for the locals, Season 2 throws us headlong into the battle for power between the Republic and remnants of the Empire. It also welcomes back some old favorites from Season 1, and most importantly of all, provides massive fan service in a few notable ways. The first big new character is Ahsoka Tana, a fan favorite female Jedi from the Clone Wars. She's both an intricate part of this story and destined for greater things in the form of her own future Disney Plus show. Rosario Dawson plays the live action part extremely well and her quiet demeanor coupled with a powerful physical presence provides both Din and the audience an incredible first glimpse into what remains of the Jedi. The second major character is only mentioned briefly by name, but make no mistake about it, Grand Admiral Thrawn is considered to be one of the single greatest characters in the entire expanded universe. While he appeared in the Rebels animated series as well, his mere presence in this universe cannot be understated, and Thrawn will absolutely be a huge intricate part of the Mandalorian moving forward. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised to see him appear in other Disney Plus Star Wars shows as well. While Moff Gideon is certainly intimidating, the introduction of Thrawn, even in passing, means big things are in store for the future of the show. Thirdly, Boba Fett. Boba Fett. We all knew as soon as The Mandalorian was announced that Boba Fett would probably make his triumphant return. And oh boy, does he ever. Tamuera Morrison, who played Jango Fett in Attack of the Clones and voiced Boba in the original trilogy special edition of Empire Strikes Back, returns to the part and absolutely crushes it. While he's heavily involved in helping our protagonist in this season, it'll be interesting to see whether he walks the line between good and bad or ends up being a full-blown villain. I would hedge my bet somewhere in the middle, as he's already lined up for his own series, The Book of Boba Fett. The introduction of that new series is worked into The Mandalorian in the form of a credit stinger at the end of the finale. Boba shows up at Jabba's palace, kills the guards, murders an overweight Bib Fortuna, and then sits on Jabba's throne. It's a huge love letter to fans of the original trilogy, especially those of us that adore Return of the Jedi. Whether he's blasting ships out of the sky on Slave One or shooting rockets from his jetpack, Boba Fett's long-awaited return absolutely lives up to the hype. The Mandalorian also contains my single favorite scene in any of the movies, media, or video games since the original trilogy. When the single X-Wing showed up at the end of the final episode, my heart started to beat really, really, really fast because I felt like I knew exactly what was coming. Luke Skywalker is my favorite character in all of Star Wars, and Ryan Johnson's mistreatment of that character in The Last Jedi was devastating. The Mandalorian gave me everything I ever wanted to see from Luke. He has the green lightsaber, the black hooded outfit, he absolutely cleans up the Dark Troopers without even batting an eye. This is the Luke we wanted in the sequel trilogy, and this is the Luke Skywalker I know and love. Despite some slightly wonky CGI on his face, this was far and away the best part of this episode, 
this season of The Mandalorian and the entire show overall, because it's everything that the sequels were not. Forget the throne room scene in The Last Jedi, and forget the forest lightsaber fight in The Force Awakens. This is the Star Wars content that we've waited so long for. And all of this is what makes season two of The Mandalorian so great. It pays homage to all the characters we know and love, while also bringing in new faces, ideas, locations, and relationships. Fortunately, the new faces aren't the only thing that's great about this show. Pedro Pascal continues to be a fantastic lead actor, Giancarlo Esposito's Moff Gideon is just as terrifying as always, and Bill Burr is back. Also, Timothy Oliphant is in this show? How come nobody told me? The single most impactful emotional beat comes at the very end of the season from characters that we're already intimately familiar with, as Din gives young Grogu, aka Baby Yoda, to Luke Skywalker. We know how how much he cares for Grogu, and the tears streaming from his eyes show us a character who's got more depth than anyone we've seen outside of the main saga films. When it comes to the technical aspects of The Mandalorian, season two sees another vast improvement across the board. Bigger sets, bigger explosions, bigger stakes, everything here is just bigger and better. While nearly everything with this season is fantastic, I must say the music is one piece of the puzzle that seems like they just quite didn't get right. Star Wars has some of the most iconic music in entertainment history, and by choosing to shy away from that music, The Mandalorian simply comes up just a little bit short. They have some slight whispers of the Star Wars theme throughout the show, but it never really cranks up like it needs to. Perhaps they're saving that for when we get big, massive, epic space battles, but John Williams' score is so critical to Star Wars that its absence is noticeable. Jon Favreau's involvement with The Mandalorian feels a bit like his involvement with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Much like the first Iron Man, he's seeding something here that we know is going to improve and grow as time goes along. It's also not a coincidence that Ant-Man director Peyton Reed is along for the ride too, directing episodes alongside other big Hollywood names like Bryce Dallas Howard and Robert Rodriguez. After last year's tremendously disappointing Rise of Skywalker, I'll link to my review in the description. It's great to see Disney's commitment to ensuring that Star Wars returns to prominence. A group of talented writers, directors, and actors is proving that there's still plenty to explore in a galaxy far, far away. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. You can also like and share the video since that tells YouTube it's worth promoting. Sound off down in the comments about season two of The Mandalorian, and I'll see you next Wednesday at 9 a.m.